Hi everybody, my name is Christine Gleski and I am the Retail and Tourism Manager at Historic Huguenot Street. Um, for the health and safety of our visitors and our entire community, Historic Huguenot Street has chosen to remain closed throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we still want to stay engaged with our community and our followers and continue to offer programming virtually. Um, one of the many digital programs that we'll be offering is a weekly reading of an excerpt from one of our books that we sell in our museum and online store. Uh, this week I'm going to be taking a peek into the suffragettes, How Women Use the Men to Get the Vote uh, by Brooke Kruger. So this is what the cover looks like. Um, so the suffragettes tells the story of how some of New York's most powerful men formed the Men's League for Women's Suffrage. Between 1909 and 1917, the League grew from just 150 members to thousands of men across 35 states. Kruger discusses how the National American Women's Suffrage Association accepted the help of this new group of allies and utilized them as suffrage foot soldiers. These men worked the streets, the stage, and the press to convince a dismissive and hostile public to support women in their demands. So I wanted to start off by showing the table of contents and this is, you get a glimpse of the chapter titles and what they'll be focusing on. I like the layout of this book. It is chronological so you can follow along as things were progressing and happening. Um, another interesting thing is because the um, men's league for women had so many prominent figures in it and like i earlier i mentioned earlier it grew so fast over the country um that there were a lot of very influential people in this group we had politicians um artists uh moguls and the beginning of each chapter focuses and features um portraits of these men and who they were, which is really interesting. So you can kind of flip through and, and take a look and see, who, um, put a face to a name. I want to just start off by talking about um, a part of this book that I think works really well, um, and that is the illustrations and images that are thrown in throughout the text. Um, You'll see as you go through, there are a number of archived images, whether they were magazine covers or newspaper articles um, that help tell the story of this movement and what men were doing to help. Um, so I chose this image to show because it features a woman who we know very well at Huguenot Street, um, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and that is Sojourner Truth. Um, she was an abolitionist, but she also was a woman's rights activist as well. Um, so I thought this was really neat. Uh, this is a cover from the Crisis magazine. And you can see it's Sojourner Truth and Abraham Lincoln with votes for women at the bottom. Um, so this was actually the cover of Crisis magazine for its votes for women's issue, which was in August of 1915. Uh, so I just thought that was a really striking um, image to see uh, for the movement. <clears throat> I wanted to read a few expert excerpts for you guys um, throughout this book. And the first one I'm going to read focuses on a gathering in Chicago in which President Wilson was set to speak to um, women regarding this time in history and what was going on. Um, so this is an excerpt from page 191 in case anybody um, wants to follow along at home or would like to purchase the book and kind of flip through and see the things that I mentioned. That is where you'd be able to find that. Um, so it, it starts on October 19th in Chicago, a mob raged outside the Congress Hotel as Wilson ar arrived to address some 4,000 cheering nonpartisan women inside. The noisy protesters were mostly men, but there were women among them too. 
they clashed with another group of demonstrators, silent ones, led by Paul and about a hundred members of her National Woman's Party. Cries of, dishwashers, where's your baby, down with suffer skulls, and back to the kitchen came at them. The Chicago Tribune reported on the melee on its front page. This is what it said. Umbrellas, canes, hand and feet ripped them to bits and snapped their staffs. So violent was the attack on the handful of women that many were knocked down and trampled. Those who attempted to defend their banners were beaten on the knuckles until their grip relaxed. Hats were torn off, hair fell in cascades, hairpins jumped like Mexican beans on the pavement. Walls rose, tears fell, waists paired, stays creaked, and the women were wild in Michigan Avenue. Wilson's automobile stopped only long enough for a petulant tut-tut or so, the Tribune said, then rolled aloofly by en route to the auditorium. The president entered the building with a campaigner's smile. On stage, he spoke of the need in politics to get together in both the national and international arenas. He never mentioned suffrage, but he did speak of the necessary role of women in American life. Men have represented the principle of rivalry, he said, the principle of commanding the services of others by superior powers of executive organization. They have gone out into the arena of business very much as they have gone out into the battlefield to make conquest of some place where they stand in control. The spirit of law, Wilson said, is to forever favor the dominant, but it seems to me that the function of society now has another element in it. And I believe that it is the element which women are going to supply. It is the element of meditation, of comprehending and drawing the elements together. It is the power of sympathy as contrasted with the power of control. Society needs what women have, he said, the power of interpretive understanding of sympathetic comprehension. So I picked this passage because it shows you just how passionate these these people were whether or not you were on the side of suffrage or you were anti-suffrage they would protest and scream and say hateful things or produce and print hateful things um to go against what these women and men were trying to accomplish and that was the right uh for women to vote um so you can see how just heated these people were in regards to this topic um and the president speaking very calmly on behalf of the political system needing to have influence of women and making that turn so another advertisement that i saw um that really struck me is from a suffrage campaign illustration um and I will show you, it's on page 226. Oops. It's got the American flag, and it says, Men who love the freedom which your fathers won for you, pay your debt by winning freedom for your daughters. Um, that spoke very loudly to me. Um, it's a very straightforward but impactful statement um, that really gets you thinking about how our country's history has been won over people standing up for what they believe in and what they want to see changed. Um, so to all the men out there who have their freedoms, now it's your turn to step up and ensure freedom and the voice of the other members of your family. So. The last thing I want to read you guys today is another uh, excerpt. This is from the bottom of page 228 to 229, and this talks about the day that New York officially passed um, voting rights for women. It says, The New York State Amendment giving women the vote passed in a sweeping victory, granting suffrage to every eligible woman citizen in New York over the age of 21, as of January 1st, 1918. The New York Sun put the winning majority at more than 90,000 votes. New York became the fourth state in the union to endorse women's suffrage and a pivotal one for dispelling the East Coast hex. 
To the New York State Women's Suffrage Party and its many section leaders, the New York Tribune accorded the greatest credit. Among those acknowledged were two of the Men's League most loyal members. Laid Law, who had worked side by side with his wife during the long struggle, and Vanderlip, who headed the Men's Advisory Co Council Committee and stood beside Mrs. Vanderlip since the beginning in her fight for the vote. Although a similar suffrage referendum in Ohio failed that day, the strength of New York victory, especially along with the winds in North Dakota, Indiana, Michigan, Nebraska, and Rhode Island, had local leaders predicting accurately, as it turned out, that the results would influence Congress in favor of hastening acceptance of the federal measure. Even the hostile New York Times flashed the news of victory from its signal lights, although its editorial board could not have been more grudging or ungenerous in its response to the win. It attributed the referendum success to the low turnout, the limits of the candidates on the ballot for several offices, and the indifference of the opposition and the enthusiasm of the faithful. The editorial noted by how great a margin this startling innovation in the polity of the state had been rejected in 1915, whereas in 1917, by a much smaller one, when the world is afire, it seems to have been adopted. The editorial added in conclusion that the Times will not pretend to rejoice at the result to which it made no effort to contribute. May the experiment, if it is to be made, disappoint the fears and predictions of its adversaries. May the women justify by their behavior their fitness for the ballot. And, all division removed, may the feminists give henceforth the full measure of their strength and energy to the cause of freedom and democracy. So it goes to show you that at this time, even a paper like the New York Times didn't have a official stance on the subject and didn't help one way or the other in the swaying of the its readers. Um, so I thought that was nice how they kind of had to acknowledge that this was won and that it was a victory without actually getting too, um, too generous with its writing and response. To the subject. Um, so that is going to conclude the reading from Suffragettes, how women use men to get the vote. Um, starting today through April 22nd, this book will be on sale through our online store. Um, it's original price of $24.95. You will now have an automatic discount at checkout for 10% off this book. So if you're interested, make sure you check out our online store and browse all of our other great books and items that we have. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys again for tuning in, and I hope that you'll come back next week to see what we have cooking in the programming department at HHS. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you guys again next week.